Hello everyone, here is the uh, second part of my lecture on diffusion of innovation model of communication. And this was our last slide. When, we, when I finished uh, the first part of lecture, this was the slide which I was discussing. And let's move to the second slide, next slide. This is about the process of diffusion of innovation. So let us see how the process happens, how actually the diffusion of innovation happens. And as you can see in this slide, it talks about different steps that are involved in diffusion of innovation process. There is step one, step two, and then on next slide, there is step three and four. There are four steps in total. So these steps actually talk about the process itself. They tell us, they explain how the diffusion of innovation happens. They tell us how a, a new idea, a new technology, a new technique is disseminated and adopted by people. Uh, the first step here is knowledge, which means that how people get awareness of the existence of a product, existence of a service or the existence of a, a new idea. So the first step is knowledge, whereby an individual actually gets awareness about the existence of an innovation. That innovation can be a new product, it can be an idea, or it can be a service. Uh, so knowledge essentially is the stage of awareness. Uh, second stage is persuasion. The, the meaning of this stage is like convinced. The individual is either convinced or he's not convinced. So you see, I have written here that individual forms a favorable or an unfavorable favorable attitude towards the innovation. Uh, in this stage, at this stage actually, the individual develops his interest uh, towards the innovation. Uh, uh, he, he develops his interest and that interest further convinces him. Uh, uh, to uh, to have a favorable opinion towards the innovation or an unfavorable opinion. These are the first two steps. Let's move to the next two steps in the process of an uh, innovation, diffusion of innovation. The third step is decision. Now, this is the stage where uh, the person actually determines uh, the utility of the idea, the utility of innovation, he, and he takes decision on the basis of his observation or on the base, sometimes on the basis of his, what he, he hears from his personal context. And you see at this stage, he can either adopt the idea, adopt the innovation, or he can reject. So both adoption and rejection can happen at this stage. Last stage is confirmation. Once the individual has decided he is going to adopt the product, or he's going to reject, he further confirms, he further finalizes his opinion. It may happen that at the stage of confirmation, the individual has already adopted the product, he has started using it, but he hears something negative from his personal context, from his social context. And that is kind of a conflicting opinion with his decision, which may shake his decision. And in that case, he may go towards the rejection, even if he had adopted earlier or he may feel satisfied and then he may think about continuing the adoption, continuing, um, he may think about continuing the use of innovation. So these are four steps that I would repeat, knowledge where an individual actually gets awareness about the existence of a product, persuasion where an individual develops interest in a product or an innovation, Decision is uh, when he find, uh, determines uh, the utility and confirmation is when he decides whether he should adhere to his decision or he should change. All right, now in this picture, and again, I have taken this picture from uh, Dennis McQuail and Wendell's book, the same book that I'm using to prepare my lectures and the same book uh, from which I will extract PDF notes to share them with you on Moodle. Now this, uh, this uh, the, uh, the picture that you see on screen is actually uh, an explanation of uh, diffusion innovation process as explained by Roger and Shoemaker in 1973. Uh, see these four things, these are the same steps that, uh, that, are, that come in the process of diffusion innovation. First step is knowledge, where an individual is, uh, where, where awareness is created, 
second step is persuasion where an individual develops interest third uh, step is decision where the individual decides and then confirmation is the fourth and last step where an individual finally uh, finalizes his uh, his opinion and his action these are four stages antecedents are pre-existing conditions antecedents are those things that were there before i mean before the individual was exposed uh, to the innovation uh, th th these were these are pre-existing conditions the conditions that were already there and you see uh, these are i mean all these factors that you see here are based on a person's uh, subjective approach that his personality where did the cursor go okay his personality characteristics his general attitude towards change social characteristics cosmopolitanism uh, social characteristics are like uh, you, need, uh, you, you see that people who live in urban areas sometimes because of their location and because of the area where they live they come to know they are exposed to innovation uh, before people who live in remote far-flung areas uh, uh, so this is this is what it means social care like the the, uh, the the location the the area where one resides perceived need for the innovation like some sometimes you you are exposed to an innovation but you feel like well yeah this seems like a good idea but apparently i'm not interested in it like that kind of thing antecedents again are pre-existing conditions before an individual is exposed to knowledge these conditions actually these factors uh, determine a person's um, uh, acceptance uh, toward uh, an innovation and then social system uh, social norms tolerance of deviancy uh, communication and take tolerance of deviancy means uh, i mean some societies in some in some i mean especially if i talk about pakistani society i mean we most most of the majority of people in pakistani society are uh, traditionalists i mean people who actually value traditional approaches in some cases it may happen that society is not much open to changes uh, I think I can give you example of uh, content, especially in the uh, in the wake of Islamization period in Pakistan. Islamization in Pakistan happened in 1980s and 90s, um, and in, in the wake of Islamization, many people were not open to uh, 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 to the content that was coming on their TVs through dish antennas and sometimes even cable TV networks. So Islamization period was a time period when Pakistan was changed and people started having conservative Islamic uh, ideologies. And because of that, there was this innovation, I mean, from VCRs, uh, which were video cassette recorders, the, uh, the devices that were used to see movies from VCRs when time changed and uh, people started having dish antennas and people started ha started having cable tv uh, networks so uh, you may have seen that many elderly people actually opposed the idea of having a dish antenna at home that well this is uh, uh, i mean yeah this is an innovation this is a new thing this is technology but we are are we promoting vulgarity and we are not maybe adhering to our values that kind of conversation so, uh, so in, uh, uh, socially there are sometimes some factors that are not very open to new techniques new ideas new innovations communication integration like uh, in, uh, um, in communication by communication integration here uh, shoemaker and roger mean the uh, the the capability of integrate uh, integration of communication like how soon a message is in, in, integrated into a society how soon a society can adopt a message 
uh, and then norms is again, I think somewhat related to tolerance of deviancy. Deviancy is change to deviate. The word comes from deviation. So you see antecedents, all this area, antecedents are actually pre-existing conditions on personal level and on social level. I will repeat, antecedents are pre-existing conditions for the diffusion innovation process. Uh, these conditions that you see here can affect a person's um, adoption to innovation on personal level. These factors that I discussed here can affect a person's adoption to innovation on social level. Sorry, I accidentally hit the next slide button. All right, so these are antecedents. This is the whole process happening. I have already explained you, uh, I have already explained these four um, uh, elements. And then uh, you see <clears throat> that here are consequences. Uh, and especially let's talk about persuasion first. Now this is the stage where the interest is developing in an individual towards an innovation. And again, you see it, I mean, all of this is subjective, like how a person's approach towards an innovation, what, uh, I mean, can be affected by all these factors. Uh, a person checks whether the innovation is compatible with his or her personality, complexity. Uh, I, I remember um, uh, there was, uh, especially when I was, um, I started my teaching and I started using the portal um, I, I, um, about 10 years ago when I not 10 years, yeah, 10 years ago when I began my teaching uh, at FC College and I was first time exposed to a portal, uh, which was slightly different from Moodle, I found it difficult. I found that, well, the, this portal doesn't seem to be uh, user friendly, so maybe I shouldn't use it in my teaching. Again, I'm giving an example from an incident that happened 10 years ago. 10 years ago when I was exposed to a portal uh, a web portal that I could use for my students. I found it to be difficult at that time. I found that it wasn't user friendly and that is how I uh, stopped using it. But now, uh, of course, we all are using portals because of the uh, pandemic. And then there is this factor of triability. Of course, an individual uh, would like to try uh, a product and then see how it goes and then further finalizes the decision. Observability you are observing your friends, you are observing people in your neighborhood around you, uh, and that observability highly affects your persuasion. Many times we are convinced towards an innovation after we observe what other people uh, have gone through. All right, we have discussed this part of the model as well. Now, antecedents like the pre-existing condition on personal level and then social level and then the whole process of uh, 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 diffusion of innovation and then comes consequences what are the con consequences even after adoption like decision either leads to adoption or rejection you see uh, at this stage an individual may decide to adopt uh, the innovation or to reject it and this uh, adoption further can lead to either continued adoption or, or discontinuance. Remember I said that at confirmation stage, a person actually finalizes whether he's going to use it or not. And uh, similarly rejection, if the decision comes in the form of rejection, it can go to later adopt. Maybe the individual rejected when he was exposed, but later he changed his mind because he heard good things from his personal context. Either there can be later on adoption or continued rejection. Maybe the person rejected the idea, rejected the innovation, and he kept hearing um, uh, negative things related to innovation. Uh, and then that is how he continues with his rejection. This picture is very, uh, I think, helpful uh, to understand the whole process of diffusion innovation in just one glance it it tells it it tells all of this very very clearly uh, let's move to the next slide which it talks about categories of adopters now uh, these uh, categories of adopters are not mentioned in the notes that i will share you it this is just an additional information that i'm sharing with you uh, and i read this in uh, roger's book 
uh, Roger's theory of uh, diffusion of innovation many years ago. So when he talks about adopters, people who actually adopt the innovation, he, he came up with five categories. He said that there are five different sorts of people who actually um, uh, who are involved in this diffusion of innovation process. Um, and then he said that, this, this is what he says, for the first category is innovators, people who have closest contact to scientific sources, and they, all, they, they also interact with other innovators, people who actually, uh, people who are at the leading stage in the whole process, people who actually come up with new ideas. Innovators can be advertisers as well. They can be scientists. Uh, they can be political leaders. All of them can be taken as innovators. Early adopters are kind of opinion leaders. Now, they are the people who have a higher social status. And uh, I mean, uh, one of their characteristics is that they are forward looking, like they are socially forward than late, late adopters. Then comes, where did the cursor go? Then comes early majority. And now they are the people who uh, enjoy sort of above ab average social status. And they are also people who uh, also uh, seldom hold positions of opinion leaderships, people who, uh, uh, who are in this category of early majority, like there, there is going to be a majority who would embrace the innovation, embrace the technology really, really soon. And then there is late majority. One of the characteristics of people who belong to this group is that uh, they are skeptical. By skeptical, I mean that they have doubts and reservations. And for this reason, they do not embrace the in innovation. They either embrace it late or they do not embrace it. Laggards. Laggards, the meaning of this word is a person who is usually late. Uh, and laggards are people who, who are usually traditionalists. Like uh, uh, when I was uh, doing conversation in my recorded uh, virtual session this morning, I said that um, I, I gave example of my father and you can find many examples in your surroundings. I said that my father always prefers reading a physical copy of the newspaper. Although he has smartphone, he also has access to several other devices at home. And my siblings and I have told him multiple times that he doesn't need to buy a physical copy of the newspaper. He can access newspaper uh, in, his, uh, in, 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 in these devices. Uh, he is a traditionalist and he emphasizes that he likes having a physical copy of the newspaper on the breakfast table. This is the first thing he likes to do. So he's a traditionalist. He, he kind of follows the tradition. But laggards, I mean, they, uh, traditionalists, they, I mean, they can be laggards because of many uh, characteristics. One of the characteristics can be that they are traditionalists. Sometimes some people do not uh, embrace an innovation because of their financial status. Uh, think about people who are not exposed to technology only because uh, that they, they are not financially stable, stable or they cannot afford. Uh, sometimes um, uh, elderly people are also laggards. Uh, I mean, uh, they are the ones who uh, usually kind of are not open to changes. Uh, so it, it, I mean, there are several sort of factors that can affect an adopter. I would repeat this information that it is, um, I, I, it is not important for you to go into the details of categories of adopters. I just shared this information with you. Uh, this is an additional information for you that I wanted to give you to enhance your understanding related to the diffusion of innovation process. Uh, all right, now remember that adoption is an individual process. Again, each person is different and uh, the process of adoption works at a different level for all individuals. In that sense, the model or the theory emphasizes a personal subjective approach to the adoption of an innovation. And also, media plays a very, very active role as a change agent. Now, with this, I have finished uh, this lecture. Uh, I hope uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was clear, everything was clear here. 
uh, even if you have any questions please do not hesitate to write uh, write an email to me uh, on uh, farasatjabeen at fccollege.edu.pk thank you